there's exactly. um, a lot of uh, promotion around it, but yeah. I think it's a very central focus um, that's going to solve the future. And yeah. It's, it's so difficult. Yeah. It's a great question. Did everyone hear the question? So why isn't the government putting having uh, environmental education be part of our curriculum? And are these cuts going to hurt environmental education? Like that's a quick summary. It's a little bit longer, but there are a couple other pieces. So one of the big concerns I have around raising average class sizes is that environmental education programs are on the chopping block. Because again, like in the trades, those are oftentimes courses that um, require smaller class sizes. And so as average class size goes up, those are the kinds of programs that are being cut. So I've had a number of um, students in particular who are part of environmental education programs uh, reach out to me with their concerns. I've been really advocating on this. The other one, and we saw this in Guelph that just broke my heart, um, some of the programs that target at-risk students are on the chopping block as well because a lot of those programs um, have small class sizes and there was one in Guelph that was canceled this year just even with the slight increase in class size and it broke my heart because I had recent graduates of the program come to my office uh, to lobby me and they were very effective because I then got them to Queens Park and got them a lot of media attention but unfortunately it still didn't save the program. They came to me and said you know what I wouldn't have graduated if it wouldn't have been for the Cadence program you know, I would be on the streets, I would probably have an addiction issue, I would have, you know, I wouldn't have been able to have a family, a job, like, without this program. And I'm here as a recent graduate to try to save the program because I want other young people to have the benefits of this program. And so that's what I find just so devastating about the cuts. They're so short-sighted. They're going to cost us more in the long run. Like, the cost of cutting these programs are going to cost us way more in the long run our criminal justice system, our healthcare system, mental health services, um, housing services, like, uh, you know, people who are going to end up on, you know, social assistance. Um, it'd be so much better to invest in them so they're contributing members of our community. And so that's a great question. I also believe that climate change should be a mandated part of our curriculum. It's something we've been advocating for. I don't think most people even understand climate science. Like, people don't understand that CO2 that was put into the atmosphere 100 years ago is still in the atmosphere. And so there, I think there's this min, misplaced mentality that, oh, when it gets so bad, we'll just stop polluting and we'll fix the problem. They don't realize like, the pollution isn't going anywhere. It's like all there. It's going to be there for a long time. And so every day we delay creates a bigger and bigger problem. And I think a lot of it's because nobody's ever had that education. And so if it was part of our curriculum, so you're absolutely right. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. No, you're absolutely right. And I just want to say one final one is, is, is there's this mentality, and I think it's driven by the premier more so than his caucus, that somehow university and college education is not necessary. Mm -hmm. That it's like, you know what, I, you know, he, I think he barely went to college and dropped out. And I'm a successful business person, so why do you even need post-secondary? But not everyone, you know, has a parent who has a successful business that they can walk into and inherit. And so um, I don't know if the premier understands how vital post-secondary education and a financial access to post-secondary education is. So again, it breaks my heart to see people who, you know, have had to, to leave post-secondary education because they can't afford it because of the cuts to the OSAP loan program. So, good question. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Hi, my name's Lauren. Uh, my husband and I are starting our family, and what concerns me is our autonomy to choose what's right for our child.